For those with a parent who's had what is known as frontal lobe dementia, there's a 50-50 chance of them developing it too. But a new study hopes to offer some promise for those at high risk by gamifying brain analysis. And an earlier diagnosis would mean the chance to try and treat the condition sooner. Well, early detection of dementia is really important because what we're beginning to understand is by the time that people start noticing symptoms of dementia, like memory loss, the, uh, there's actually might be quite extensive changes in the brain there. This app is actually developed for 30 and 40 year olds to use to help diagnose the possible early stages of dementia. Now, I have to say, I was a little bit nervous about doing this because I was worried I was going to find out something I didn't want to. But it seems that because it's still very early days for the trial, right now this will all just come down to some anonymised data, so I won't actually get that answer back. But the questions are all a mixture of whether you're going to get it right, the time that you're going to do it in, and whether you're going to be able to finish each section in time. And it's from that that the decision as to whether you already have early stage dementia or not can be made. It's a series of 18 different games which test effectively different cognitive functions. So that might be executive function, it might be social function, it might be visuospatial, language, arithmetic. So the tests are designed to each in their own way test different areas of the brain. But you also get lots of simple benefits such as being able to measure timings and accuracy of, of when people answer things and how they answer things. And so by being much, much more sensitive than the paper-based um, testing system, then yeah, again, you've got a hope of, of treating things. This is part of a year-long study. The test is taken every three months, as well as a paper test at the start and finish. 20% of those taking part already have symptoms. The others are those with a 50% chance of developing frontal lobe dementia. If we can show efficacy in the wider dementia population, then that might be something that can be used at a front line by GPs. But of course, it's very, very important to do that alongside genetic counselling and you know, all of the other implications of a diagnosis that come with it. I've got real hopes for the Ignite app that can help people with frontal temporal dementia by measuring the sensitive changes in their cognition and thinking that go in the early stages of the disease. And then as part of a wider study, that can be used to measure the effects of new and novel types of treatment and drugs to see if it, they are actually having a benefit in the performance on these type of tests and apps. And of course, it's not just the patient whose life is affected. For loved ones, it can be a heartbreaking and frustrating journey. And often one that's hard to comprehend. Well, this is a VR experience that aims to put you in the position of the person who has dementia, to be able to help you provide a bit more empathy for a loved one, or simply understand more about the condition. Use this voice. Okay, my daughter's talking to me, but the voice is saying I can't hear her. I feel very disconnected from her, and I'm not sure if that's a deliberate part of the experience or just because she is a person in virtual reality. Bob will be wanting his lunch at one. Why is she just chatting on the phone? She's not paying me proper attention. She's agitated and talking about Dad again. She's talking about me. I think this is probably how not to treat a relative with dementia. No, I don't think it's time to be thinking about a home. Oh, goodness. Oh, but apparently I've misheard and I want to go home. I don't feel yes. safe here. Oh, wow, well, it's all become a bit muddled. Well, it certainly stirs up quite a reaction. I felt frustrated, a bit confused at times, anxious, and actually quite hurt by the way I was being dealt with by my daughter. So I think there's quite a lot going on in the experience to think about, but I really could do with the opinion of someone who knows more than I do. Tim has worked in dementia care for many years and knows only too well the day-to-day -day challenges and the importance of dealing with them sensitively. I'll just pop this kettle on the hob. It won't be long now. They can see the steam. Was that nice? Dementia is not just about losing your memory, it can affect your perception as well. So this VR app was about, you know, keeping track of a particular sequence of events to do something like making a cup of tea or taking your pills. The reality is, is we looked at some of those rooms, some of the floors are a bit shiny, and that, if your perception has been affected, it could look like a wet floor. 
when we look at a patterned carpet that might look like perhaps animals or shapes moving in the, in, the, um, uh, in the floor. When we were the gentleman in the cafe and with the daughter, actually seeing that he wasn't recognising the timing, he thought he was going home for lunch, and then she was on the phone and ignoring him and speaking about him as if he wasn't there. Well, that's the wrong way to do it. You need to be with the person. They are there. They're a whole person. See the person, not the dementia. I think it really brought the experience to life, but most importantly, actually, it showed what not to do sometimes. What does this note say? For a condition so widespread, bringing home the reality could be really helpful. And whilst it may take decades to see whether early diagnosis will make a difference to the outcome, the research is a positive step in the right direction, providing hope for many thousands of people affected by something so devastating. Two red and one blue.